Hello, dear friends. We're so honored and delighted that you're here with us again today in this seven-part series on every Monday at this particular uh, time in this particular room. Um, I'm Tezekiah Gabriel from Pathways to Peace, and I'm just honored and delighted that our president and co-founder, Avon Madison, is launching our conversation today. Avon? Mm, welcome, everyone. It's a privilege to be here. Well, as Tezekiah just said, Pathways to Peace is honored to host um, these important talks on racism and healing with Rich Sheely. And this is a very, a time of such a critical issue of racial injustice, which has pervaded history and which now must end through awareness and through wise concerted action. And this moment in history is especially another wake up call with the passing of John Lewis, an extraordinary exemplar of um, what we call peace through justice with pathways to peace. Um, he served in Congress for over 33 years, was the youngest person to be invited during the March on Washington in 1963 to speak just before the Reverend Martin Luther King um, because he, at the age of 21, had become a member of the Freedom Riders. And he has served in a way that has inspired others to not only peace through nonviolence, but peace through wise, concerted action and through all forms of injustice um, to be able to be a champion of those, which he did for all of his years and especially his 33 years in Congress. And Rich, um, it is such a privilege to have your wisdom shared because you have that same kind of quality of of wisdom and heart and, and lifelong dedication um, to ending racial injustice um, and that healing, that is the fo major form of healing that we need to focus on right now. Um, so it is a privilege for all of us to hear not only your wisdom, Rich, but also in these healing talks with both you and Tez. And I now turn it over to the heartfully wise Tezekiah to facilitate our dialogue today. Tezekiah. Thank you, Avon, for that beautiful introduction. Absolutely, absolutely everything under board. And so again, just to step back and repeat, because it's worth repeating, Rich Pathways to Peace is absolutely delighted that you're willing to be here. You are a colleague, a friend, and an honored sage, and absolutely align with and um, support your broad, deep, and beautiful wisdom. So welcome and thank you, Rich. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Avon. Thank you so much, Tez. It's just, it's great to be here today. And uh, as Avon was speaking about uh, Brother Lewis, my heart was touched, and it. Uh, I, I would like to start by pointing out that uh, John Lewis lived. He was an living example of what we are talking about and what we are reaching for to share with everyone. When you listen to his language, the language that he used, he spoke about the unity and the oneness of the human family. Yes. Uh, and that, that is telling you that consciously, consciously he had made it to the place that we're trying to help so many others uh, join him and arriving at that place of consciously living beyond the constraints of the status quo. Uh, the status quo is a very, very strong, strong dynamic that keeps people confined in a place that keeps them locked into the social injustice. Um, and sometimes we talk about racial injustice, but we'll come to a time in these discussions when we're talking about language. 
and we we need to we need to teach ourselves the language of oneness the language of the one human family and and as we are teaching ourselves that language then we will uh we won't include words like race or racism or so on but we will include the language of family the language of love the language of compassion the language of forgiveness and transparency now for today um we want to link back to uh what we shared in the first discussion uh and that is that in communication there's a great difficulty because we're always communicating on three levels simultaneously we're communicating on the conscious conscious level we're communicating on the unconscious level and we're communicating on the energetic level now a few of us understand what our unconscious values our unconscious value and process is all about most of us are not self reflective enough to really understand what our unconscious values are doing dr bruce lipton has done a great deal of work in this arena and he talks about our unconscious process as being a process of programming where we are programming to value uh, to value things to think things and to choose things that we did not of our own volition select and these things uh tend to be embedded uh in our life process prior to our 7th year of age and these this this valuing then uh can highly influences even to the point of controlling our thinking our choices and our behaviors and this is the the foundation for the difficulty of having a a authentic conversation about race because if if one person is valuing things and valuing their engagement in life in a certain way and another person that they are seeking to communicate with is valuing their engagement with life in a totally different way on the one hand you have a person who is unconsciously addicted to white supremacy and white privilege who values life in a certain way even though they are not aware that they are valuing it in that way and on the other hand you have a person who values life in a different way in a way that they're defending themselves against white supremacy and white privilege and income inequality and and that makes for a a very substantial gap in being able to uh and being able to have an authentic conversation so you have to start in a place that as best as possible creates a common ground on which you can stand to have that conversation now it is unlikely that you're going to find common ground at the conscious level so you have to go to a place where there can be a conscious and there can be a common ground that common ground you're going to find at your energetic level because that is where there is no doubt that we are all the same that we all are our ground of being is our energy and that ground of being gives rise to our biology it gives rise to our mind and all of these these things are when you get to the energy it is the same now that energy can be expressed uniquely and individually we all have we all have our own unique individual energy signature 
the universe rec recognizes you by that signature. But here's the trick. The trick is the universe recognizes your authentic energy signature, your true energy signature. When you reach that same level that John Lewis um, has reached, and his energy goes on, by the way, when you reach that same level, then the universe begins to recognize you and respond to you authentically. Right now, you have a relationship with the universe energetically, but it is not an activated relationship unless you have engaged your energy in an authentic way. You have what is called awakened. So if you haven't, if, if you have not been able to do that, then you will be operating from the perspective of your unconscious values in all likelihood. Now, how do you know that your unconscious values are working against you with regard to um, your exchanges at those ethnic barriers? Uh, take for instance, if you're driving and someone who is of a different ethnicity cuts you off, what is your immediate response? You don't, you don't, you don't have to tell, you don't have to tell me, you don't have to tell anyone else, but you know for yourself what your immediate response is. Is, is your immediate response a balanced and um, loving response? Oh, that person must be in a hurry. I should give them more room. Or is your response something different? Is your response an emotional response that speaks of your unconscious values? That, that's something you can decide on your own. But the point is, when you're under pressure, when you're under pressure, there is a significant likelihood that your unconscious values will intrude into your conscious activity and let you know um, where you stand. So that's, uh, that, those are just a couple of small vignettes. Uh, but I think, it's so, I, I think it's so important to understand that when you, when you, when you learn to value love at the highest level, value compassion at the highest level, forgiveness at the highest level, and transparency. And, and when I say transparency, I'm really talking about being truly authentic in what, in what you're doing. Um, then you have a, you, you, be, you can begin to make progress. You can begin to move toward the fullness of your humanity. But it is, it is a, a, a challenge uh, to do this because of the strength and the power and, and the level within your um, system, your, your, your whole life being, um, that these, these values are deeply buried. They're, they're deeply buried and they're connected to traumas and multi-generational trauma. And, and it's so important that, that, that we understand that you cannot, um, you, you cannot inflict trauma on another human being of any kind without being impacted by that trauma within your own being. So, you know, and, and this is the, this is the pain, this is, this is, this is the pain of living an inauthentic life is, is that underneath everything, this trauma is causing problems within your system 
because there is a way in which the traumas that you uh, inflict upon yourself um, reverberate back to your body chemistry and, and disrupt the um, homeostasis of your body chemistry. And that disruption of your body chemistry some scientists would say would be the basis for illness and disease because your your system is to is designed to function flawlessly that you should be healthy but we've taught ourselves to believe that as we as we age we will almost automatically get sick and over time um, uh, suffer uh, the end but you're not designed for that. What you're designed for is to be robustly healthy. But if you don't have the right values and you don't have the right thought process, then it is going to backfill into your body chemistry and cause you to be vulnerable uh, to many problems. But um, so you want to, you, you, you will help yourself by getting this process, um, getting this process right. So you yeah. want to learn about what are you valuing unconsciously? Now, what I used to suggest to people that they do, if they were trying to figure out what they value, uh, unconsciously was to, um, do a 90 day diary of your daily behavior flows. And what you're looking for in that 90 day diary, you're looking for patterns, patterns of behavior that you repeat because your thinking and your behaviors are designed to serve what you authentically value. And if you, if you examine those patterns on a daily basis for about 90 days, you should be able to discern the patterns that you repeat. And out of discerning those patterns that you repeat, you might be able to see those things that you are valuing unconsciously, especially when you're under pressure when you are provoked to anger or you are, you feel yourself to be uh, under threat. When you're in a situation where you feel that you're, you're being threatened and, uh, and, and, and looking at those patterns of thinking, those patterns of behavior, you might be able to discern unconscious values that you want to change and you can change those unconscious values your your system uh both uh both at the cognitive level and at the energetic level your system is designed for change and you can make those changes um that's a very complicated process but you you are designed to make those those changes and John Lewis was one who demonstrated over a lifetime how that change could be made and how you could start with a life of nonviolence and beautifully demonstrate a life of nonviolence over 80 years. Um, so, I, I'm, I, I, Tez, I tried not to look at the clock, but I couldn't help myself. So, <laughs> if, if we have a, a question or two, we can deal with those. Uh, Tez, you're muted. You're muted, Tez Gaia. <laughs> In the meantime, Mish, maybe you could just check this, the chat box or invite people to put their I, questions let me, in. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I am back. Sorry. Uh, the beauty of technology as we're facilitating. So, Rich, I just uh, felt it would be a very good time for me to check back with who you are because we've had more people come in. And I, I would like to introduce Rich Shealy. Rich is a light warrior and the founder and chief servant of the Optimal Human Global Community, a community of evolved and evolving humans of all ethnicities who are committed to doing their part to end racism as an integral part of the human experience. Also, Rich is the creator of Heart Transformed, Ending Racism, a learning system that helps people and their journey with racism awaken to the fullness of their humanity and live consciously beyond the constraints of race, racism, and white supremacy. So I felt it was really important to get that in. Um, and um, we, we do welcome and encourage your questions and your comments. Um, and as both Rich and Avon were about to encourage. And I'd like to also say that, that we recognize that what's really relevant to our work to end racism is coming into these conversations with an open heart and an open mind. So we hope that you had an opportunity to settle in, to breathe, and to open up your hearts and minds. So, um, so let me take a look and see what we have for, for questions, if any, in our chat room. Um, so here's one from David. Uh, what you say is so necessary in long term. How to deal with personal racial reactions and communication? How can we deal with with personal racial reactions and communication in the current moment? The first thing you want to do is to notice, notice those reactions because you must first acknowledge them uh, before, you, uh, before you can do the work that's necessary to change them. Um, there's a book called um, Dismantling Racism, I believe the author is a retired minister, Dr. Joseph Bart, B-A-R-N-D-T. And uh, Dr. Bart in his book uh, talks about um, what we call white people, and he's a white person, uh, living in a prison. Um, and uh, it's important to understand that prison Prison has four walls. The first wall is separation and isolation, that whites tend to separate themselves from non-whites and stay isolated in their own communities and social circles. The second wall is lies and delusions, um, that they tend to embrace lies about non-whites uh, and have delusions about them uh, that create difference uh, between them and uh, leave the idea of being a white person sacrosanct and the standard for all life. Uh, thirdly, um, the idea of um, um, their lives are anesthetized and they have amnesia anesthetized in the sense that they are not able to perceive or feel the trauma that non-whites are required to endure on a daily basis. And, and they don't, you know, not only do they, they not perceive the trauma in the moment, but they don't remember it thereafter. So they have amnesia and they're anesthetized. And finally, the fourth wall, is the addiction to white supremacy and um, white privilege and the normalization uh, of those, the normalization of, of um, 
of white supremacy, white privilege, and income inequality, thinking that that is normal, which means that everybody else is substantially denied um, what they should have as part of a democratic society. So those, so w when you live in that kind of, of prison, uh, it's very difficult to, to find a, a way out, but we're, we're sharing how to get out of that prison here today in our discussion and our sharing. And the way out, and let me say again, is love, compassion, forgiveness, and authenticity. Thank you. We have another um, question. Um, no, this is mine. I just think people know about next week in the chat what our issue or topic is. So are there other questions from our, our uh, participants? Okay, well, I have a question. Um, just to be able, oh, well, and we're almost done. So we probably don't have a question. So instead, I'm going to say that um, I'd like to pick up this question uh, for the future um, about why conversations about race um, have not led to action. And you know, it's a personal favorite question of mine, Rich, just simply because after over five decades of work, um, I sometimes get a little down about the lack of action to end racism. And so I once said, you know, it was never my intention to engage in a long conversation. And so yeah. I'm really interested in that topic as well as what I put in our chat box, which is, you know, in what ways might we un be unconsciously identified with race, racism, and white supremacy? I think you've given us a great foundation to go a little deeper on that. And are we using the language of slavery? And so with that, what I'd like to do is to encourage those of you who would like to know more about Rich's work or to maybe engage with Rich around his work, that uh, let me pull up a slide that has Rich's contact information. Um, and, and Rich does work with groups. Um, he does work with, with individuals. And, um, and I know Rich would love to hear from you. This is his contact information along with um, just reminding you that these healing talks take place at the same time in the same room for 30 minutes for a total of seven Mondays that began July 13th. So this is only our second session and we've gained just so much wisdom from you, Rich. Thank you so much. So do you have any closing remarks, Rich, before we honor people's time by letting them go back to whatever they need to do with their day. Yes. Um, I, I want to close today um, with a response to your dismay over having worked 50 years <laughs> at this and not having seen the kind of pro progress you'd like to say. The, the reason for that is race, racism and inequality are so deeply integrated into the engagement of life that we have, um, that it, it is a complete, it would, it would require a complete rethinking and a totally different approach to life than we have presently. Um, that's the power of the status quo. Ending racism, if, if you ended racism today, you wouldn't have a societal structure to work with because our societal structure, its, it's skeleton, its laws, everything about it is built around racism, race, income inequality, white supremacy, white privilege. 
So that's why the that's why the problem is so difficult to solve. It's it's all everything of is of a piece in this. And if we want if we want a a different engagement with life, we have to be prepared to do that. We have to be prepared to begin to act like we are one human family, that we love each other and we choose to honor each other. Yes. As with all sustainable work, it begins within yes. each of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And, and I so appreciate, Rich, that you always, in all of this very challenging work around ending racism, you always end with a pathway to unity. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you. And so with that, I'm going to conclude our time together. Um, and of course, little technology glitch there. And from a perspective of Pathways to Peace, we want you all to know that you are a pathway to peace. And peace does begin within. And we can only have peace through justice. So we look forward to seeing you hopefully next Monday or a Monday in the future. And thank you, Avon, for your beautiful wisdom. Thank you, Richard, for being who you are and for being willing to share the wisdom that's going to change our lives. Thank you, all of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.